Um, so, you know, we started our period of healing and that was like really good and things looked like they were going like pretty well. Like through March and April, um, I was feeling great, really. You know, and um, Adrian, my partner and I, you know, we're planning our wedding for November and everything seemed to be going along really swimmingly and uh, I was looking towards sort of like next year and you know I decided that I was going to go back to university and I was going to study psychology which is something I've been interested in for more than 20 years so um, I thought you know everything's moving forward and that this would be a good time for that to happen and um, a few things happened and this is one of the problems with having something like PTSD and depression is that you tend to take things probably not in the way that other people would take them or you don't necessarily get over things as fast as other people I know I take a lot longer to process things that are, than some people do um, I will play stuff over in my brain for weeks and months instead of just days like most people would um, so um, so I had also had a change of medication over the Christmas period, um, I had been taking a drug called Cipramil, which is often used for long-term depression, and I was changed onto another drug called Cymbalta, which is main aim is um, anxiety, and what it does is it takes the peaks and the valleys away and kind of leaves you in the middle, which, as I said, for me is kind of depressed. So, um, but it has dealt with my anxiety really well. Like I was at the point where I was having anxiety attacks almost constantly. Like I was almost constantly in this state of anxiety. So, you know, with an elevated heart rate and everything like being a really big issue and um, being easily startled by things, particularly when I came off my other meds and I was on nothing for a while. Like that was a really rough period for a couple of weeks there. Um, and it's, there are a few people in this house with anxiety, but like any loud noises, um, a sudden raising of voices, someone slamming a door, all these things were like super duper heightened and it was pretty much exhausting. <laughs> Which is why I basically went on the simp altar is because the anxiety had become debilitating. Like I was finding it really hard just to function. And that was even with the super meal, I, the anxiety was too much to deal with. So I was, you know, I'm quite happy about the um, Cymbalta taking away the anxiety and I have very few anxiety attacks now, which is great. Um, unfortunately, I'm depressed as shit. <laughs> and, and that is one of the side effects, is that um, I've ended up more depressed than I was before. Which is fine most of the time, but then you come into winter and it, it just makes everything harder. Um, and... There was, you know, that, that period of time that you go through when you go on a new drug where they have to, like, balance your drugs out to make sure everything's working properly. And um, so I had to increase the Cymbalta because it stopped working, basically. It started having major anxieties again. So we increased that. That took care of the anxiety. But it, of course, the depression worsened slightly. And all the other side effects that it had has, because it has a few other ones... They all sort of, you know, they're there, they're all low level, you kind of like deal with them on a daily basis. But then I started getting itchy and this is this sort of started happening in um, May, around May. Um, and at first it was just like some itching across my stomach and on the sides of my boobs. And I saw the doctor and he was like, oh yeah, it's just like... Um, the, the area where there's like your pants are rubbing and your bra rubs on the side. He goes like, I don't think it's anything to worry about. And he gives me some cream for it and it's like, oh, okay, that's all very well. And kind of like went on a little bit longer. And then it just kept on getting worse. And it was starting to be everywhere. And um, it was really weird as well because like my hands started like my hands started getting like super duper itchy and I would like be rubbing my hands together and my hands started swelling so I couldn't like wear my rings I had to take my rings off I didn't wear my rings for probably a month 
month and a half, something like that, because my hands were just so itchy all the time that they were swelling and um, it was very unpleasant, but there was no sign of an, any rash or anything. There was no rash associated with this. It was just itching everywhere. And I was itching so much and partly because I have acrylic nails and I keep my acrylic nails a little bit thicker anyway, um, I was bruising. And I had, like, particularly the, like, the tops of my thighs, which was a particularly bad area, and the backs of my legs, um, I had black bruises, like, really bad black bruises, um, and I had, like, the tops of my feet were really itchy, so they had bruises, I was itchy everywhere, and I ended up with bruises everywhere from, because I try not to scratch, <laughs> so I tend to rub instead, um, and, yeah, it was... It got to the point that it was literally driving me bonkers. Like, I just didn't know how to deal with it anymore. So I went back to the doctor and I showed him these bruises, like the ones on top of my thigh that are like black. And he was like, wow, this is um, insane. <laughs> like, this must be really unpleasant. I was like, oh, no. Um, but we didn't know what it was. This is where the problem was, is that we didn't know where it was. But we figured it was probably something I was eat, like ingesting because it was all over my body. Um, and nobody else in the house, like my mum gets itchiness across her back, but you know, that's kind of been happening for a really long time. It, nobody else was suffering, and there's lots of other people who have sensitive skin. And the other thing I was noticing is that my face skin was like super duper reactive. So like, I get really hairy here and down my neck. It's probably to do with the thyroid thing, but anyway. Um, and I often pluck those hairs. And what was happening is when I plucked those hairs, instead of there being no kind of reaction, which is what normally happens, or there being a, a tiny spot of redness, I was getting like a big lump of red, inflamed, angry looking skin. And it was just constant. Of course, I didn't want to wear makeup because my face just felt so uncomfortable because it reacted to everything. And it was just, it was basically just really unpleasant to, you know, like, you know, pluck out a chin hair and then you'd have this big red sore spot on your face. It was like, this is really strange. And so we, um, I went back, when we went back to the doctor, um, we were discussing the fact that um, the Cymbalta had taken care of my anxiety, but of course I wasn't sleeping because insomnia can be a bit of an issue with Cymbalta. Wasn't sleeping very well. And, of course, the itchiness was driving me crazy, so I wasn't sleeping anyway. And he recommended that during the day I take an antihistamine like um, Zyrtec, one of those type of things, and at night take Phenergan, which I'd never heard of before, but whatever, um, which has a whole does a whole bunch of things. Um, and the reason he picked that one is because it not only is an antihistamine, it is also known to be sedative to people. And I thought, oh, this is great. And we kind of realised that Cymbalta is probably what's causing the itchiness. So it was like, do we reduce the dose of Cymbalta to try to reduce the itchiness? But then that's likely to bring back anxiety. Or do we try Phenergan and see whether that takes care of the itchiness so we don't have to change? Because I really didn't want to have to change my medication again, like my depression medication or anxiety medication again. So I started taking Finnegan, found out that Finnegan actually, well, for the first two or three weeks I was on Finnegan, uh, yeah, it did act as a sedative and I did get a couple of really good night's sleep with some really weird dreams. As one of the side effects of Finnegan is really strange dreams. I had lots of them. Um, I did get some really, really good sleep and it took care of the itchiness. Um, and then I found out that I adjusted to it really, really well. I adjusted to it to the point where Finnegan is no longer a sedative. However, it does take care of my itch. So, uh, yeah. That, I worked that out the night that I took Finnegan at 7.30 at night and I was still wide awake at 3 in the morning. Yeah, thanks Finnegan. You suck. Um, yeah, but it does take care of the itchiness. Like, within about 20 minutes of taking it, if I'm starting to itch, which is basically when I take it, as soon as I notice that I'm starting to itch, um, yeah, it takes care of that, but it doesn't take care of um, putting me to sleep anymore. So, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so, that's kind of added into everything. So, I've had all of that medical stuff, which is, like, leads us up to about now. Um, but in May, 
on top of all of this medical stuff I was trying to deal with and being driven crazy, a friend, I use that word very lightly, um, decided to unfriend me on Facebook. Um, I know that doesn't seem like a big thing to most people, it's like, I mean, I probably get unfriended every day by people, but this was somebody that I considered a friend, and she was supposed to be coming to my wedding uh, from overseas because she was going to be in the country, and um, I, I thought we were friends, and she unfriended me, and I sent her a message, and she'd actually left a group that she was in, and this is when we kind of like noticed it. She unfriended somebody else. She went to the extent of blocking that person. She didn't block me, she just unfriended me. And it was like, okay, and uh, I sent her a message asking what was going on, because like I was seriously confused. Like, I hadn't done anything that I was aware of. Um, we had been admins together on a group, but she'd already left, and she was still in a group chat with the other admins and I and the woman who runs the group who's the one who got blocked um, and she went on a rant in this group and basically had a go at the the boss lady um, because the boss lady had thanked me for kind of keeping the group going while she was having some um, personal issues um, and you know this person who unfriended me she had been helping but then she left so there was probably a two week period where the majority of the workload was on me um, because one of the other girls who was helping, who is also a friend, she was having issues like she could only really access Facebook from her phone and lots of people have been having issues with Facebook and phone. So I generally don't use Facebook on my phone anyway, I use my PC. Anyway, um, she'd been helping out as much as she can but basically there was two of us <laughs> that were doing the majority of the work. And so the boss lady had given me like this shout out and apparently this pissed off this other person to the point that uh, and um, we decided to archive and redo our Instagram for this particular group um, to make it look more cohesive or whatever. Anyway, this pissed her off to the point that she uh, unfriended the boss lady and blocked her everywhere, blocked the group and everything. I was like, okay, so fair enough, she upset you, I can understand that, but why did you unfriend me? And she turned around and she said, the reason I unfriended Jen is because I think she's depressing. She literally said in this group with like five other people that I'm depressing. And if there's one thing that somebody who has depression doesn't really like to hear is that other people find them depressing. Because you blame yourself enough as it is. You blame yourself for making everybody else's life difficult. And I actually try real hard not to post too much depressing stuff on Facebook. I tend to try to post positive type stuff. And, you know, yeah, sometimes I'll post stuff like I'm having a shitty day. But, you know, who doesn't? That's what Facebook's for, isn't it? Um... But yeah, she basically said I was depressing, and that's why she'd unfriended me, and well, she thought the stuff I was posting was depressing or whatever, and I'm like, you know, you could have just unfollowed my feed, and then you'd not see any of it, but unfriending somebody because they have a mental illness and you don't like it, like that's f as low that is so low, and everybody else was pretty pissed about that actually. Um, the boss lady lost her shit. It took her 24 hours to do it, but she absolutely, like, she spent 24 hours so she could calm down, but she absolutely lost it, and that's what she was actually more upset about, was her unfriending me because of my mental illness, than uh, she was about being unfriended and blocked herself, which, you know, she's cool. Um, yeah, so that kind of, like, you know, I kind of tried to act like I was cool with it and, you know, her loss and I'm so big and tough and I can handle this. But really, I was absolutely gutted. I, I was so upset and I found it really, really hard to deal with um, internally. It was like, it just fed into all of this stuff that I have about I'm not good enough and, and I'm a terrible person because I'm mentally ill and I make everybody else upset and I make everyone else's life terrible. 
So it all kind of like decided to get together and have a little party in my brain all through June. Um, so um, yeah, and you know, I said I process things a lot slower than other people, so I might talk about how fast I can process shit, but you know, well how, I mean, I, I basically tried to like blow it off to other people, but really it, it absolutely got to me. It hurts so bad. I didn't want to talk to people, I didn't want to interact with people, it made me want to pull out of everything that I was doing. Um, that, that I don't handle rejection, rejection well at all, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically by the start of June I was basically um, an emotional mess. Um, and, you know, I was still functioning at a really low level, which is kind of like average for me anyway. Um, you know, doing essential type stuff. Um, but I was doing like, you know, the sleeping in bed all day thing or lying in bed all day thing, not necessarily sleeping. You know, you kind of doze on and off all day. Um, you know, wearing pyjamas for three days in a row, not showering any more than once or twice a week. Um, not wanting to talk to people, not wanting to interact with people. I mean, the bright spark for June was Sim Seasons coming out. Like, that was literally the only thing I looked forward to, like, the whole damn month. Um, I just, I just found it really, really hot. And, uh, the weather wasn't helping, you know, it was cold and dreary, because winter. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, that's basically, and by the time I was sort of starting to feel a bit better, it was sort of to the end of June, uh, Sim Seasons came out June 23rd, um, so, sort of about that time I sort of started to pick back up a bit and um, by then there was no point updating any of my videos because <laughs> it was the end of the month and I basically hadn't, I hadn't even been doing my skincare properly, I hadn't, I really hadn't been doing anything at all. Um, yeah, and like my, one of my boys turned 18 and it was like, just, it was so hard just to make sure I went and bought him a present and made him a cake and so June was really terrible. It was really hard from a mental health point of view. I'm starting to feel better now. I have to say, I'm feeling better. I, I'm still depressed, but I'm accepting that the depression is basically that's where it's at. I am, I, I'm clinically depressed. I have been for a really long time, and I will be for a really long time. Um, because that's kind of like the baseline. Um, but I am feeling better, so I'm back, back filming videos. I didn't film for like six weeks. <laughs> I'm back filming videos. I am feeling a bit more on my game. I'm trying to be kinder to myself and you know, just take it a step at a time and focus on those things that are important to me, like my family. Um, and yeah. <laughs> and that was my partner. I don't know if you heard what he said, but he said I'm fucking awesome because I am. <laughs> sure are. Um, yeah. So that that's why I wasn't around last month. That, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, so if you have any other questions or anything that you want to know, anything I didn't cover or that you're confused about, just ask me down below. I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer it. Um, you know, if you want more in-depth on um, the mental health side of things, like the conditions and how they're dealt with and stuff like that, you can ask me about that. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Um, it is something that's pretty important to me. You know, I live with it every single day. Um, yeah. So that is it for this update of where I was last month. Uh, if you want to subscribe, click the button down there, or leave me a thumbs up if you got to the end of this video. <laughs> Not if you necessarily liked it, but anyway. Um, and leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments, and I'll see you in my next video. See ya.